Oh boy. Thankfully things eased up this year, but 2021 was unquestionably the year of the scalper. A perfect storm of two hardware launches and a global pandemic-induced supply chain interruption empowered resellers to an unacceptable and unprecedented degree, allowing them to exacerbate console supply woes by jumping on ridiculous proportions of stock, all while selling the solution to the problem they created at a premium. We all know what the result was. Of course, scalpers have been a problem as far back as the PlayStation 2. I distinctly remember in the waning days of 2000, eBay was rife with PS2 listings that ascended into four figures, and this was for a system with a $300 price point, not $500. However, this was a short-term problem and was largely resolved in a matter of months, not years. So while scalping has always been a problem in what we might call the modern age of consoles, it has never been so innately cancerous as it was with the PS5 and Xbox series. I reiterate, this was unacceptable to begin with, and it would behoove the game industry to get out in front of the next wave of launches by planning them out better ahead of time. Now I'll be doing another video in the future about how console launches themselves need to be done better. This one in particular is about managing limited stock over a period of time. And I hinted at this in the 8.2 video, but now is a chance for me to explain my proposal in greater detail. The root problem is obviously allowing for bulk sales of hardware. If you make it impossible to walk into a GameStop or Best Buy and purchase eight of the same console, you're probably going to wreak havoc on the resale practice. The question then becomes how to go about this. Yes, you can press retailers to institute a one-per-customer sales policy, but that would more than likely come out to one-per-customer per store per allocation, since it's hard for retailers to enforce anything more extensive by themselves, especially at the store level. The plan, then, would be for all sales to originate from the platform holder themselves. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft could set up specialized online storefronts where, when logged in with the respective ecosystem's account, you make your purchase. Your account would be cross-referenced with your address and credit card number and recorded with your purchase, so nobody can double dip. Now, I do understand that large households exist, so maybe a second console could be allowed per address as long as the associated account and credit card are different. And finally, Priority should be given based on lifetime investment in the account. The people who have spent the most on account subscriptions, downloadable games, and DLC should go to the front of the line to prevent potential scalpers from making a bunch of throwaway accounts with prepaid debit cards to get in on more stock. I should mention that Sony in particular already has the groundwork for this in place and has been selling PlayStations directly to customers via their PlayStation accounts, basically since the shortages became an issue. They just used very small allocations and probably didn't implement the priority controls that I'm suggesting here, although I can neither prove nor disprove that. Of course, the concept thus far would justifiably cause a great deal of anxiety with retailers, who have a lot to lose in being cut out of the hardware sales process, both at launch and beyond and already have no small amount of indigestion as the market moves further and further toward a digital future. So what you do is you fold them into the process. So here's the overall solution I'm suggesting. When buying a console, you go to the platform holder in question's website. You log into your account, go to the storefront, which would have a hardware section specifically for purchasing consoles. You select the SKU you want, and on the checkout screen, you choose which retailer you want to make your purchase through. Your credit card and billing address are recorded, and you then choose whether you want shipping or in-store pickup, which means that this system does not eliminate same-day purchases. In other words, store allocations would be largely unchanged. They would just be reserved for customers buying through the platform holder's registration system to make sure that they're going exclusively to customers and not resellers. Under this system, a scalper might be able to finagle an extra console or two with a bit of work and probably some expense, oh how the tables have turned, but would never be able to acquire enough stock to create a problem only to sell the solution, which is what we're going for here, eliminating flipping as a viable hustle altogether. This also wouldn't have to go on forever, just long enough to satisfactorily catch supply up to demand without resellers interfering with the process and muddling the comparison. And once things level off, you can go back to the traditional retail model unless things go sideways again. The benefits of such a system are numerous. Taking pressure off of a still-recovering supply chain, keeping middlemen from bleeding players dry and interfering with software attach rates, and keeping any shortages brief. The less money people have to spend on hardware, the more they'll have left for software. That benefits both sides of the industry. That's all for now. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe as it really helps the channel, and help this one in particular go viral as best you can so that hopefully this idea finds its way into the right heads. Until next time, I'm Patrick Mifflin, sounding off.